Hey guys, welcome back. You might notice today I look a little bit taller. That's because I'm on the roof. That is a preview of things to come. Some of our solar connectors are wiring and we're tackling it first thing this morning. As you can see, we've got a bit of space to work with. Right in here. Now, that is the front of the coach, of course, and somewhere in this area, we're gonna drill up, install the inlet for the solar cables to go down, back in through our closet, uh, but we need to mount the panels today while the sun is up, it's nice and dry out here, and while we're motivated. <laughs> uh, one thing we didn't expect is how tall this rig was, so it's actually kind of hard to pass things all the way up there, but hopefully we don't have too big of a problem. So we're going to do three panel series and four, four groups of those in parallel. It's a whole bunch of nonsense most people don't need to memorize. We're gonna see if we can't use as much of this space up as possible. And last night we did put the feet on our panels. Emma's applying the VHB right now, but we didn't do any wiring because you don't know how long you need the, the cabling, but we have plenty of that cabling. We've got about 50 feet of 10 gauge wire. We've got our charge controller and all that good stuff and we won't terminate inside yet, uh, but we'll get as much done. And then in Washington, all we have to do is just drill the hole, run the wires through, connect the batteries, the inverter, and the charge controller. So that'll be the easy part. Let's get started. So we've got the existing 190, which definitely needs a bath. That's nice and big. It would have been nice if it was over and up a little bit more, but that's okay. That is what it is. This is about the size of our panel. Slightly better shot. So the nice part is it's a little bit smaller. I'm gonna see if we can't go like one here, maybe one here, one here, uh, and then sort of work our way down. Now we haven't put these down yet, Something that may not naturally occur to some folks who have never done this before is we always park, uh, you know, generally on the side of the roads and usually there's gonna be trees on this side. So I hate putting, this being the passenger side, I don't care to put a lot of solar on this side. I'd rather have it on the street side. So it'll be nice to fill that in and we probably wanna fill that in first and then whatever's remaining will come up here. Um, but it's good to know that we can fill this area uh, getting around it is another, you know, kind of another issue because we still want to be able to service everything. So we'll have to kind of factor that in. Uh, I really think we're probably going to try to come in here on the edge first. Uh, but we're just dry fitting for now and, and uh, we'll do our best. And if we do make a mistake, we're using, uh, we're using VHB and a Turtabon. Um, that has worked fantastic in the past. But it is a bitch to get up. It is it's a real pain to get up uh, after the fact, but definitely not impossible. So, um, fingers crossed, no, nothing. <laughs> we don't need to redo any of it. Uh, but if we do, it's not the end of the world. We've got four more to go. Uh, Emma's gonna have to come up here and help me play Tetris because if it's only four more to go, we may be able to go one, two, you know, uh, I've got this guy going this way, but three, maybe a fourth on the rear. I'd like to keep as much of this open as possible. And I'm always cognizant of the shade, as you can see, uh, shading those panels, rendering them basically useless. Uh, because if one of the panels in that series goes bad uh, or gets shade, it brings them all down. So, but again, I'm kind of kind of looking at as much on this side as possible. I'd like to put another, but I, I don't want to, if this ever needs to be serviced, I don't want to crowd this, this uh, AC. Um, um, although I will say the only time we've ever used an air conditioner, I think was when we were in for service at Airstream in Ohio, uh, in Jackson Center, Ohio. Uh, and we had actually taken, a, taken our rig in to get the AC removed. And then they said, uh, they let us know after we were there that the air conditioner could not be removed. And I think that the spacing between the ribs was too great um, because we wanted to have a fan put in instead, but at least we had other warranty work to get done. So. I do want to put a max air fan right here. So we'll have to have enough room to kind of scoop in there and get this uh, die core out of here. And we want room over here for the, for the cover. I don't think that'll be too big of a deal, but that's kind of a must have upgrade. One thing I am noticing is it does get pretty toasty in here. That's not the end of the world. We'll figure that out. Uh, but I know, I know yesterday, because the only vent is in the bathroom, we'll have to, we'll have to figure out what we're going to do about that. 
you know, it might be an option to pull out the air conditioner in here. And then, you know, that's a bigger project. Uh, but pull out one of the ACs, plug that off. And then, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see what we're doing there. That rig is so cool. It's basically plexiglass or another type of clear plastic all around. It's a homemade camper, of course. Uh, what a cool little rig. We saw it on uh, Camper Van Kevin's channel. <laughs> That's neat seeing that out here. Alrighty, some progress. We've got these guys mounted up and now we're running some wire. So these three are running series. So that's one group in series. This guy, this guy, and this guy will be running another series. So it's another group, this guy, this guy, and then another one that will go right here. That's another group, and then one, two, three, four, the fourth group. So if you didn't know the difference between parallel and series, parallel is just when you connect positive to positive. Both positives connect to one positive and then into your battery, or three or four or however many, and that's going to increase your amperage. Series, however, is when you go positive, so you have one positive, goes, then the negative goes to the next positive, negative goes to the next positive, and then the negative out from there and that creates one series, which increases your voltage. The reason that we are is so that we can continue using 10 gauge wire, uh, and it keeps our, our amperage and our voltage within reasonable specs so we don't burn out our cables or, or create too much heat. It's a lot simpler once you're actually doing it, but we have to create each one of these wires <laughs> individually. So uh, we have been out here for almost two hours now and we're still going. All right, so, we're done, for now. We've got some extra parts. For being no holes in the roof, I think it turns out pretty pretty good. It's worked on our Airstreams, or on our Scamp. I think I already mentioned this, but one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, and then one, two, three. And then we have all the cables. We'll clean this up a little bit more later. Uh, we need to still run some wire loom over that as well. And then from there to this guy to here, and then right around here, we'll be drilling up through the closet to run our wires down so we don't have to see them every day. But we are both hungry, so we're gonna go ahead and clean up our mess here and, and hit the road. We'll see if we can make it to California and get some of that in and out while we're, while we're here. Take one last look at all of these. Great news guys, due to the authority in my captain's hat, they waved us right through. Not a problem. I just want to say, if you guys are considering the Casper mattress, it's a two-man job. I think it's heavy and it's big. And I believe that we just need to unroll it from here. But we just have to cut the uh, material and then it expands. So that's kind of cool. I think it's like a six or eight hour process. I mean, it barely fit in the hallway. Look at that. We had not a lot of clearance to get it back here. Woo! This thing is huge and it's already expanded, but that is, that is a thousand times more comfortable than what we, that piece of crap. <laughs> so here's the problem. Our slide is out right now. We got to bring it back in and I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how that's going to work. So. Well, let's see what happens when we do. When the, there's a big issue. We might just squish it. We might have to trim it. And because it's memory foam, which is really nice, we can just, we can pull this outside cover off, trim it as we've done with the scamp. Uh, but the nice, I mean, it fits right between the two nightstands, which is really great. Yeah. Uh, the, only, the only difference between a queen mattress and an RV queen is the length. And so it's queen size. We just might have to trim some of the length off. One of the courtesy clerks actually came and grabbed the, the uh, Casper box from us. So that was awesome. <laughs> Uh, and now we'll see if we can find a place where it's likely that somebody that can use the mattress will pick it up. It's still in the packaging and all that good stuff, and it's kind of a it's kind of a shame for it to go to waste. Uh, so we're back on I-10, heading westbound. Check this out. 
And you got the wind farm here. That's kind of neat. Alrighty, another quick shopping trip. It's so weird being back in a state where you can't see people's faces. This bugs me. Got an ambulance, class C, and a little, uh, I don't know if that's a homemade camper or what, but kind of cool looking. Pulled by a little Volvo. <laughs> Good morning. It is 5.30 in the morning. We didn't end the video out because we kept driving as late as we could, which is not very late. It was only like 10. I'm a wiener. The first thing this morning, cut our new bed. It's definitely too long. <laughs> it does hit here. Uh, it is a hell of a lot better than what we did have on the bed uh, that it came with, but that's any RV mattress. So off we go. Also, definitely violated the work. Cutting has been completed. It doesn't look bad, which is great. We'll just do some tidying up, maybe some of the fabric glue and, and just get that uh, get that pinch. But we'll bring the slide in and make sure that it works. Still a little bit. Also, this is what the slide looks like when it's in. Not bad at all. Hmm. You guys want to go potty? Come on. This is where we stayed last night. It's a uh, farm on this side and truck stop on, on this. So uh, we need to get the heck out of here uh, before we get into these folks' way. And I don't know if you can see it. Look at that sunrise. Beautiful. It's lunchtime, and where else? I'm sure this is going to offend some folks. I don't know what this Whataburger in and out competition is all about, but in and out We don't have these in Washington, um, and they're okay. They're kind of somewhat equivalent to our Dick's Drive-In Burgers in Seattle. Um, like, they're nothing to walk right home about, but okay. It'll pass.
All right. I gotta say, more times we have in and out I will say their fries are plain, but they taste a lot more fresh. And they're, you, they use sunflower oil, so it's not quite as greasy and gross as like McDonald's, for example. But if I had to pick between In-N-Out and Whataburger, honestly, I'm going with In-N-Out. I just don't feel like crap afterwards. Yeah, I would agree. And I like that they let you put your own salt on. Like, I don't like really salty fries. Word. have made it to the Google headquarters. Unlike Apple, which has a main headquarters and then usually they're gonna be kind of secret satellite campuses and then a bunch around the, the US, Google has some pretty descript buildings uh, and some of them more than others. Check this out. They've got little statues for every uh, version of Android <laughs> that they come out with, which is kind of funny. Now I started out on an Android smartphone and then after about the iPhone 4, I switched over to, uh, to Apple. Uh, and then a few years later, I started working for Apple and spent six years with Apple. I gotta say, uh, even having spent some time at Apple corporate, this campus is a whole lot cooler. I mean, <laughs> look at that. Emma refuses to switch from iOS. I love the idea of Android, but I just want my device to work. And, and my phone, my iPhone, pretty much does that. Uh, most of the time, it just works, everything syncs up. It's just simple. It's kind of the way that things should be. I want to switch. I love Android itself, especially the open source components. Ah, every time though, I switch back. I always try and then I go back. And it drives Emma, Emma pretty crazy. <laughs> there are a lot of, uh, there's a lot of RVs out here around this campus and a lot of their engineers actually live full time in RVs. Uh, it's a really great way to save money. We stayed here, I believe it was like last February, early March, and uh, we stayed here at the campus for like three days, rode around, rode down to the Apple campus, kind of hung out, enjoyed the weather, and it's so nice. We're definitely gonna have to come back when we do our 101 trip and see if we can't find like the Google store open or show the Apple campus. I just think all these, these tech companies, they have their pros and their cons. Um, and there's a place for tech and there's a place for simplicity, but I don't know. It's really, a, it's a different world down here. It's kind of, it's kind of neat. It's hard to get a grasp through a quick recording, but we'll definitely be back. We're still hauling up to, to Washington right now. And there she is again. It's actually been a very minor adjustment overall. I think it's a little bit lower than we thought it was. Uh, so that'll take some getting used to, but otherwise it's been pretty, pretty great. Awesome. You know, we have all our stuff back in there and like really have things organized. Really move in. Yep. I really have to get better at taking stickers off because this is pretty bad. But <laughs> we've got a couple others that we've taken off the sides and such uh, and done a much better job. We're going to get these guys water let them go to the bathroom and head back down the road and we'll see if we can't go through San Francisco and, and see the Golden Gate Bridge because I think that would be a cool thing, uh, especially as a, a maiden voyage with her.
these are the best prices in the area and uh, something I'm not gonna miss about California. All right, we got our pizza and now we're off to San Francisco. Let's see if, uh, see if we can't get any cool shots of that bridge. It's, uh, <laughs> that bridge is pretty narrow, so uh, we'll see if it's not how scary that is. Worth it. We've made it to San Francisco. Golden Gate Bridge. Our solar's still intact, of course. Everything's looking pretty great. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and close this video out here because we've got a lot of miles to put on. What a better place to end a video than at the Golden Gate Bridge. Absolutely. If there's anything cool to see, we'll go ahead and, and I'll add it to the end of this video, but otherwise, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Hi, guys. Bye.